Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from uh, Huawei in Netherlands. It was played in 2003 between Judith Polgar and Anatoly Karpov. Uh, but before we check out the game, uh, I would like to just uh, thank everyone for taking the time to vote for our next big saga. It's only been one day, uh, but already 30,000 of you have voted. Uh, these are the results so far. Uh, we have uh, Judith Polgar saga 17%. Paul Morphy Saga 35%, Alekhin Saga 12%, Petrosian Saga 7% and Anatoly Karpov Saga uh, 28%. So basically it's it's uh, between Paul Morphy and Anatoly Karpov. But like I said, uh, only 30,000 votes so far, the, the poll is still young and if you want to contribute um, to our next big saga, cast your vote. The first link in the description below uh, will take you to our community tab where you can uh, vote on the next big saga. So, you know, uh, and also maybe, maybe drop a comment. Uh, uh, the who wins? Uh, I mean, uh, if uh, if a certain uh, saga wins the poll, it doesn't mean that we are going to do that saga, but it will uh, greatly influence my decision, of course. So that, that being said, uh, let's check out this very nice game. Like I said, 2003, Hugo Wayne, Netherlands, and uh, this is the 7th edition of the tournament, and basically they were orga organizing it. Uh, they had the world champion, well, former world champion Anatoly Karpov here. They had the world junior champion. This year it was Levon Aronian. They had the Dutch champion Ivan Sokolov and the top-rated woman player Judith Polgar. So it's a four-player uh, tournament. Uh, everyone faces each other twice, and in the end, uh, who emerges victorious. So this is, the, uh, this is the game from round one. It's really, really, uh, well, interesting, so I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. The unit opens with e4, as she usually does. Uh, we have e5 by Karpov, knight to f3, knight to f6, Karpov goes for the Petrov defense, and now just knight captures on e5, going for the main line. Uh, we have d6, knight back to f3, and now knight captures on e4. So d4 by Judith, this is the classical attack against the Petrov, d5, and the bishop to d3. This is uh, still all played today, so nothing nothing out of the ordinary, ordinary bishop to e7. Uh, we have castles by Judith and knight to c6. Uh, we have c4, this, this is still all uh, standard stuff. Uh, knight to b4 going after the bishop here, and now bishop to e2. Still the most popular move even in 2019. Uh, we have castles by Karpov and then now a3. Pushing the knight back, we have knight to c6 and now c captures on d5, inviting the queen so you can develop the knight with tempo. So uh, queen captures on d5 by Karpov with uh, knight to c3 and then now a trade on c3. Knight captures, b captures, and here uh, the main move today is bishop to f5, and for good reason it uh, guards the b1 square, uh, it gets uh, the piece into the game, prevents rook b1. Uh, but uh, in 2003, Karpov went for queen to d6. Got uh, the queen out of the way. He he plans on developing the bishop to e6, but maybe it's not the most precise move order as bishop to f5 would have been uh, better as, well, one of the reasons why it's uh, the main move today in the position. And you did goes rook to b1 immediately. Now you cannot develop the bishop because you lose the b7 pawn. So here Karpov is forced to play b6 if he wants to develop the light square bishop. Uh, we have rook to e1 by Judith and now bishop to e6, developing the bishop this way. Uh, we have bishop back to d3 now, uh, wasting a move, uh, well not wasting a move, uh, sort of losing a tempo, but you have to. Uh, Karpov also lost a uh, tempo going knight to b4 back to c6, so it's not really a problem getting the bishop to a much more uh, useful diagonal. And here Karpov goes rook a to e8. So here, it's a very it's a very interesting position, and the position really offers a lot. Uh, here, Judith played rook to b5. It's a very, very nice rook lift. You can bring the rook all the way into the attack if necessary, or you can just go rook b5, rook to e5 to double rooks, as you already have a rook on e1. Now, there is the possibility of going rook captures on e6 right away, but it's such a... Uh, well, uh, to play this against Anatoly Karpov, it's just, uh, I, I don't think, uh, you know, anyone would dare play such a move. Of course, you cannot capture with the queen due to d5 winning yet another piece, uh, winning the knight here, because if you capture just bishop captures on h7 and then you lose the queen. However, after rook captures, you can play f captures and now... Uh, the, the point is that queen to c2 is just such a strong move, uh, but it's it's very hard to calculate all of the ins and outs. For example, if you go h6, then you really weaken the light squares. If h6, then just then you can go queen to e2, queen to e4, and the black will constantly have problems along the light squares. If, if you go g6, white can even just pick it up, uh, just the bishop captures and g6. So there are a lot a lot of possibilities here. Uh, 
there's a, there, there's really uh, really a lot. Uh, but uh, like I said, playing such a move, just uh, you know, sacrificing a rook on e6 and then going queen to c2 against Anatoly Karpov, uh, I, I don't think so. So here, Yudit goes for the a safer approach. Rook to b5, uh, just uh, a very nice rook lift, preparing to bring this rook into the game as well. And now knight to a5 by Karpov. Probably preparing to kick the rook away, uh, maybe with c6, and also you, you do get control of the b3 square if the rook ever moves uh, from the b file, also you get control of the c4 square, so uh, th there are some uses to the knight being uh, on a5 for the moment, but here you just goes rook to e5, and Karpov pushes it back, knight to c6, and here again... Uh, if it was if it was possible to sacrifice an e6, then is it even possible now? It is, but still, it's uh, uh, it, it's a bit of a different position. So if rook captures now, a queen capture still doesn't work uh, now due to the obvious reasons of the <laughs> the other rook being here. So after f captures an e6, queen to c2 is again very strong, and here. Okay, uh, we already said h6 uh, creates a lot of light square weaknesses. You could just, uh, you know, get your queen queen into the attack. If g6, g6 is, uh, well, you just uh, pick it up. It's not a problem. h captures, queen captures with check, king here. Uh, you give a check, king goes to g8, and now rook to e4 will uh, finish the game very nicely with, with this rook lift. So here, after queen to c2, it, uh, it obviously g6 and h6 doesn't really work for black. But what if rook captures an f3? And here is where... Where, uh, the the line gets really interesting and probably why, one of the reasons why you did, uh, did not go for rook captures on e6 because it's just uh, becomes very complicated bishop captures on h7 check king f8 now you have to win back the exchange and now after bishop to f6 uh, the material is uh, well white is up a pawn but still it's uh it's a really crazy position and in the end white will uh, white will be better but it requires a lot of calculation uh you, still i do have to mention you're playing anatoly karpov and you don't want to burn all of your bridges uh you know uh, before before the end of the game but here okay after bishop to g6 you do get you do get a lot of play with white if if black wants to save the rook let's say rook d8 now you make room for the queen and you will constantly have uh issues here uh with uh, with black uh, so really, really an interesting variation, but uh, Yudit retreats with the rook. We have rook back to e2. <clears throat> uh, rook to e3, probably possible, uh, but uh, then again, you still haven't developed your dark square bishop. Your knight is blocking you from, uh, you know, just roaming the third rank. So for the moment, rook to e2, uh, we'll see what happens next. We have bishop to d7 by Karpov. Now just uh, preparing bishop to f6 to trade some rooks along the e-file. And here, Yudit goes d5. Doesn't allow the knight to, to go anywhere in the center. Forces the knight back to the uh, to the edge of the board. We have knight back to a5. And now, if uh, Yudit was, uh, was a positional player, so we, we would see c4, bishop to f6, and then the game continues. But Yudit is an attacker. She goes knight to e5. Just, uh, you know, brings a, a piece closer to the enemy king, if you will. And here, what do you play? Okay, Karpov continues. Bishop to f6. Uh, he wants to trade pieces. Uh, again, f4 is a possibility, but after f4, uh, black will, of course, not trade and allow you this beautiful center. Uh, so Yudit decides for bishop to f4 instead. Uh, Karpov trades with bishop captures. With bishop captures uh, on e5 now, uh, Yudit wins the bishop pair, and Karpov uh, grabs a pawn with queen captures on a3. And here, uh, what do you do? Uh, well, Yudit brought another piece into the game. Uh, not interested in ideas like uh, with captures on c7, which would just allow Karpov to, to trade pieces. Rook to e3, and now it's it. Now this is a very nice rook lift again because this rook came uh, all the way from b1. It, it went b5 to e5 to e2, and only now to e3. And from e3 now the rook can roam the e file and uh, create some threats against the black king. And here Karpov. Uh, Karpov's uh, spidey sense should have been tingling here. He he has to play g6, prevent some, uh, you know, prevent prevent this again bishop pair from hell. We we could call them that. Uh, but Karpov played queen to c5, and queen to c5 uh, is just too slow of a move here. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to figure out why queen to c5 doesn't work, and uh, to check if your spidey sense is tingling. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on finding such a such a beautiful two bishop sacrifice. And if you're if, if you're familiar with it, it's basically uh, Emmanuel Lasker's pa patent sacrifice. Uh, you sacrifice a bishop, deliver a check, and then you sacrifice the other bishop because the rook is ready to enter the attack. So here you did play the bishop captures on h7 with check. Uh, it doesn't matter if you de decline the sacrifice. Queen to h5 is deadly either way. So here Karpov captured it, and we have. Queen to h5 with check. And after this, Queen to h5 check, uh, Anatoly Karpov resigned the game. And it was a remarkable victory for Judith in round one of the Hu Wen tournament in Netherlands. As, uh, well, you again, I have to repeat, you're playing Anatoly Karpov here. You don't just beat him in 20, 26 moves, especially with a double bishop sacrifice. Here, he resigns because after the king moves, which is the only move, now you continue with bishop captures on g7. This is what, what's meant with a double bishop sacrifice. And now if king captures, it's, uh, well, it's pretty straightforward. Rook g3 check, king moves, and now queen to g5 is mate. The king has nowhere to go. The rook controls the entire e-file. And even if you don't capture the bishop, uh, well, the queen h8 is a threat, so you have to do something. You can't just uh, do nothing. If you try something like f6 to create... Uh uh, to create some room for your uh, for your king, maybe on f7, if queen to h8, it doesn't really matter. Just bishop captures on f6 is sufficient because now, well, if you capture on e3, queen g6 is mate. So there's also this mate. And if you don't, if you capture the bishop, then again, it's just rook to g3 check, king to f8. We have queen to h8 check. The rook still covers the entire e file, king f7, and now rook to g7 will be mate. So yeah, after queen to h5, Karpov resigned and a wonderful victory for Judith Polgar in round one of the uh, the, the Hu Wayne tournament. And we, uh, I also prepared the, the final standings uh, of this tournament. So here they are. Uh, as you can see, Judith took first place with four, uh, four out of six points. Levon took second place with three out of six, uh, tying with uh, Ivan Sokolov. Uh, and Anatoly Karpov uh, finished last with two out of six points. Uh, not not the greatest tournament for him, but in those days he didn't play all that much classical chess. He more, more uh, played more of a, a rapid chess, if you will. Uh, and yeah, uh, Udit, uh, the only game Judith lost here it was to Ivan Sokolov. Sokolov also played a, a, a brilliant uh, uh, game, sacrificing pieces, so it was a very nice game. Uh, but yeah, just uh, as we, we did have a, uh, in, in the poll, you know, if, if uh, any of you were interested in Judith Polgar saga, so for the moment only 17% for Judith Polgar, but just uh, if you wanted to, to check out some of, some of her games, uh, this is one such game. So I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Ignacio Raul Freiberg, uh, uh, Gregoire Sherlin, and uh, Fahrudin Jinic for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions. And, uh, well, we do have the, the Tata Steel uh, coming up uh, soon in India, so we're going to cover that as well. And uh, I'm going to leave the uh, the poll to be, you know, uh, gaining votes for, for some maybe a week, and then we're going to decide on the next big saga. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.